Rock and Sand Apologetics welcomes you to another Bible study in the Lord of the Rings. This is the second uh, study in the Friends of the Fellowship. Tom Bombadil, help on look for. So let's get right to it. Say friend and enter. Following the chronological journey of Frodo to Rivendell, we start with Bobo, the one responsible for this necessary journey. Yet Frodo was not alone. His friends conspired a plan that they might go with him. Of course, Sam Gamgee was ordered to stay by Frodo's side by Gandalf. After uh, Sam was caught eavesdropping, Merry and Pippin were the uh, the chief conspirators who eventually joined uh, Sam and Fro Frodo, deciding they should go into the old forest. They found the Black Riders were hunting the Shire for someone named Baggins. I'm sure they were to order, the orders were to find Bilbo Baggins, but since they only had the last name, they uh, followed the right trail and were nearly caught on more, more than one occasion. Then they ran into Tom Bombadil. Have you ever met someone who is always so happy that it almost makes you mad? If I were Frodo, I think that's how I would have felt about Tom. Sure, I would have been thankful for his help. But this joy that transcended the surrounding events would have annoyed me to no end. This is something I believe God understands, but even so, God calls us to rejoice regardless of our circumstances. In Scripture, we have the Apostle Paul telling us to rejoice in the Lord always. Yet, here was someone who experienced shipwreck, stonings, beatings, and being tossed in jail so many times that much of his writings were written while in prison. He was able to separate the feelings of the flesh from the truth he knew in his heart. Likewise, David wrote many of the Psalms in the we find in scripture he began by crying out to god and ended giving god all glory and praise there are many examples like this who is tom bombadil that's the big question one left unanswered what if tom was just Tom. And by that, I mean, I don't mean a person. I mean a place. It's a place that even our greatest turmoil are surrounded by peace and joy and comfort. So extreme that even in our struggles, we find ourselves rejoicing. Tom sings all the time. He, he's humble. He has, his capacity to love is great. Isn't this something we should strive for? If then we walk through this life, if we are obedient to the Lord, we should not be surprised that when in the depths of despair, we find ourselves in the presence of the Holy Spirit, giving us strength not just to bear up under burden 
but to sing a song of praise and rejoice in the Lord our God. Are the threats and dangers removed? No, they have, however, been overcome. And God is simply asking us to rejoice in that fact before it actually is re realized in our lives. There is great power in this. It is a great truth of Christianity that often goes overlooked. He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. Because He has set His love upon me, therefore I will deliver Him. I will set him on high because he has known my name. He shall call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble and I will deliver him and honor him. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. Psalm 91, 1 through 2 and 14 through 16.